entertainment, insights. Don't take life too seriously. Welcome to Brainsky Unleashed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Brainsky Unleashed. Today, we are joined by Christy Spencer. Christy is a absolute etiquette professional. She, uh, she speaks, she teaches, she coaches uh, everyone from uh, individuals to businesses to students on etiquette and, and what the, the, the right ways are and the wrong ways are to uh, practice proper etiquette. I thought this would be a really fun podcast considering I'm probably not the most uh, well-versed at etiquette. And uh, so if you're watching this and you see her cringing, uh, those are at least moments that um, I've probably done something really wrong. So uh, Christy, welcome to the program. Let's, let's learn today about etiquette. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm looking forward to this. All right. Very good. So uh, when it comes to etiquette, um, this is something that uh, I, I think my mother would say that um, I'm really not good at. Uh, what is it that you normally find? And let's just see, let's compare how bad I am to what you would normally find a human being. So what, what is a normal being's normal human beings etiquette when you normally find them, they come to you and they say, Christy, I want to learn. Where are they at? Benchmark it. They are typically lacking some confidence socially. And that has escalated in the last couple of years because so many reasons, but we were working at home uh, we were we encountered so much stress, uh, whether it was with media, with other people, in our jobs, with our children, all of those kinds of things really made us think about ourselves. And we were me, me, me. And that's when we lose that self-awareness. And that's when we can come off more rudely than we think that we are, that we want to be. And the other thing is people think that people are paying so much more attention to them than they actually are. So when people feel very self-conscious when they're eating or when they're making small talk with other people, it's really not as important and the focus really isn't on you as much as you think it is. So typically if anyone comes to me or anyone brings up the subject etiquette, they're a lot further along than they're probably giving themselves credit for. Okay. So, so you're identifying people who uh, have a confidence issue. Um, they maybe not were, you know, they, they weren't necessarily used to being around other people for a while. And so uh, that manifested in a lack of confidence or a lack of awareness, right? I think it's a, that lack of awareness, you know, that's the big thing is that we stopped looking at other people. We stopped impacting other people or looking at how we're impacting other people. And that results in some rude behavior for sure. So what types of rude behavior... <laughs> Here we go. What types of rude behavior uh, are, are you identifying that you normally see? So when it comes to workplace civility, we're talking about people who interrupt other people, people who don't maybe show the respect that they should by dressing appropriately for things, people who are uh, late uh, continually, people who don't return emails, uh, people who don't understand other people's space and sharing spaces at work since we may be a, a hybrid situation or we've been home for a while, it can manifest itself so many places in the workplace. Socially, it probably is, you know, not responding to texts, um, oh. not RSVPing for parties. You know, we're getting a little bit, we're getting a little bit in the weeds there, but it is so important that we are going to be social again. If you choose to be social, you're going to have to follow some of these, you know, rules that we have about um, the little formalities that make life go a little bit better. Mm. So, I mean, the good news is that for me, uh, there's not a lot of good news. Uh, so I guess news for me is that I should be responding to texts and emails at a faster clip. Kind of terrible about that. Um, I guess the really bad news is that um, uh, bodily functions. I mean, that's you didn't, you didn't bring that one up. I mean, that, you, you didn't, I mean clearly, there obviously, there's no etiquette there, but I'm good at them, so I thought I'd bring it up. Is there ever so, a good time for that? 
uh, well, we don't really get to pick that time, do we? And so right. um, it it really is about the people around you. So when something happens like that, and it happens to everyone, it's really best to ignore it if you can. And I'm probably the worst offender when it comes to this because they are so dang funny. But yes. in a formal situation, you really, um, you know, with your friends and your family, that's one thing. Um, but if you are in a social situation or professional situation you just got to forget that it ever happened and if you have to excuse yourself to you know get it together do that because the person already feels horrible enough you don't want to add to that embarrassment okay now who feels horrible the person who just made the sound but what if it's someone like myself who doesn't necessarily feel embarrassed by said sound is there a way to embrace it and make it a lighthearted moment versus an uncomfortable moment for everybody? <laughs> um, well, you're, you're thinking about how you react to things. It, right. And that's where, you know, we where that self-awareness is, yes. okay, well, how does everybody else feel right. about this? And I think it's hard, real hard to take a poll, you know, in the room. So um, I think it's better just in that professional situation, just pretend that it didn't happen and just move on. So saying something like, all right, nope, that was me, even though it's just two people in the room, that's not going to work. It really depends on that formality. You know, I mean, is this an office mate that you're with a lot of the time or is this somebody that you're just meeting? Um, that's a rough, that's a rough first impression right? with somebody. No, <laughs> so I would say top shelf, we're going to ignore it. And then as we get more comfortable with somebody that, that we might, uh, say something about all right so we are not asking to uh to pull our finger by any stretch of the imagination <laughs> that's not considered good etiquette okay so here we are we are at a dinner party and those of us who have been eating like animals our entire lives couldn't tell you the difference between forks what should we be doing if it is a formal setup so if you look down at your place setting and you have a small fork and then you have a large fork, that gives you a signal that you're going to have a salad and you're going to have an entree and you work from the outside in. So you would use that salad fork first and it's usually smaller and then you would use your main entree fork. You can always look around and see what somebody else is doing, but then you also think back to how often do you look around and you know, zero in on what fork somebody else is using. It really, right. And so it's sure. much more about the, conver the conversation that they're right. making, how they're building a relationship, how they're focusing on other people, their conversation skills. So just knowing the fork does make it easier for the person because you know that rule. Now you don't have to think about it anymore. But I tell people, don't get too hung up. The last thing you want to do is get to a dinner and then just freeze because you don't know the motions to make. You want to just be able to, to know that, talk to the person across from you. Have you ever had to work with people who clearly are unlike myself, uh, where it, 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 it impacts them in a big way if they get lost with the fork and they freeze? Like, is that really a thing? Well, you know, people who have anxiety, 20% of them, their specific anxiety is eating in front of other people. And number. that might, it's huge. And that might be because they're physically afraid of choking or making some, what are those bodily noises that you're talking about? Or they are afraid that they'll be made fun of, or they have been made fun of in the past by somebody. And that's why we try to kind of reframe these things. So really to cut down on that anxiety for people. Is there ever any coaching to help people become more comfortable uh, making fun of themselves? <laughs> I think that's, you know, having a sense of humor does not, is not separate from having etiquette. You can have etiquette and you can still have that sense of humor and oh, making fun hope. of ourselves. Yeah, there is hope. There is hope. It's not, it's really not about being perfect. You know, it's about just trying to make other people feel comfortable. That's really what the essence of this is, is it's your ability to have some self-awareness, to notice your impact on other people and try to make the world just a little bit better for that person while you're with them. So what, what would be like one 
top line, A number one, the best, most important thing you should be doing when interacting with one or two other individuals, so a small setting, what what would that be to, to, to really be able to have a positive impact? I think the biggest thing is think before you act. So Ooh. many times people will say, why did you do that? And we'll say, I don't know, I wasn't thinking. And so that's the biggest thing is for us to realize there are options. Sometimes we think, well, I had to do this or I had to do that. By just taking a moment and thinking before we do something and thinking, okay, how's this going to impact the other person? Or how could I possibly take this situation and build a relationship from it, even if it's a difficult situation? That's the first step is you got to think about your options. And we're not robots. We're not perfectly programming and ticking this box of rules and how to's and don't do's and those kinds of things. So we really are. have to think for ourselves. Okay. So in doing that though, is there, how much thought has to go into this? Like I, I'm imagining a world where I'm behaving really well. And, you know, for me, one of my struggles is not interrupting because, you know, I guess I'm bombastic like that. Um, when not interrupting that, now you're forcing yourself to listen and actively listen to other people, but also trying to balance the listening with my own behavior. How, how am I behaving? Greensky Unleashed is powered by ProfitMax. Did you know that 93% of businesses overpay on their taxes? Do you pay too much in taxes? A recent study showed that businesses are overpaying between 34 and 71%. ProfitMax has proven legal tax strategy solutions to reduce your tax burden. I'm not only a client, but I even join the team to help other business owners just like me pay only their fair share and nothing more. Go to ProfitMax.co. That's ProfitMax.co. ProfitMax.co to find out more. You can even connect with me there, as you should. And I'll help make sure that your tax bill is legally as low as allowed. ProfitMax. Keep your cash. What advice do you have then for someone who has to perform that multitasking dance in a way that they can still actively listen while not, you know, behaving poorly? I think one thing you can do is sometimes we just have people who go on and on and on, you know, and so we're trying to get an edge in or word in edgewise, we have a time constraint, something like that. So I think it's nice to say that up front, say, you know, do you have a minute? And you say, yeah, I've got about Actually, I have about five of them that I could give you. And then you can, um, if you do need to interrupt them, you can say, hey, hey, Bob, I understand what you said. Kind of rephrase it to them real quickly, show you understood it, and then say, I want to, I want to tell you about this before we have to go. Or if you're trying to include somebody else, say, you know, I understand this is what you said. I'd like to hear what Joe has to think. And so those are some strategies that you can use to interrupt politely. You can also say, hey, I know I'm interrupting here, but I just had to make this point before we go forward. So acknowledging that interruption is better than just busting through like a bull in a china closet. Okay. So that, that is something that I can work on. I am bad about that. I'll admit it. Um, Bob just doesn't shut up. <laughs> uh, I mean, I want to talk, right? Um, you know, I, I think that uh, one area that we all fail though, uh, myself specifically, is active listening. Um, my understanding with active listening, and, and maybe you can correct me on this, is listening and then being able to regurgitate or sum up what Bob has just said to show Bob that I have been listening. And I'm using Bob because if I use my wife's name, then that would indicate that I would be actively listening, but that is not how a marriage works to the best of my knowledge. So we can also, we can do that regurgitation, but we don't have to do it word for word. It doesn't have to be, you know, very explicit. Other ways that we can show that we're active listening, where these are visual cues, which most of our communication are visual cues as opposed to our words, is we can lean into that person. We can look them in the eye. We can give them our full attention. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, those are some ways non-verbally that you can show that you're listening, listening actively. And then, you know, a quick summary. I understood what you said. This is what you, you said, you know, going to come back to your point in that conversation, but really doing it visually is just as important as doing it with your words. So that means we really have to be giving people our attention. We have to be looking at their eyes. Um, 
that we're not on the phone. We're not writing mm. an email while we're talking to people. Mm. And, you know, multitasking is a myth. It, it doesn't work for anyone. It's really hard to give our attention in so many places. So by really focusing, giving that a couple minutes, you're going to be further along in your day than if you're trying to do that multitask. Interesting. Yeah. We're all so guilty with the, with the phones. It's, it's, yes, it's, it's really bad. called fubbing. Phone what? snubbing. That's a word? Fubbing. Fubbing. That, yes. It's, that's a thing? <laughs> it's Yes. It's fubbing. It's phone snubbing. And that's when you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden you look at them and they're in their phone. I am a fubber. <laughs> oh, fub. Oh, fub me. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I've, this is this, I have learned something. I am a major fubber. And uh, for those that I've fubbed, I apologize for fubbing all over. It will be Fubbers Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Fubber. Okay. <laughs> So when you, you when you say lean in, right? So I'm I'm going to go back to something you said a, a few seconds ago. Leaning in, um, you don't want to lean into someone's personal space, though, uh, which then uh, that leads me to ask this very important question: Is it ever appropriate to eat a tuna fish sandwich in a business meeting? <laughs> you know what? I am going to have to go with no. And the okay. same goes for other kinds of fish. Maybe even broccoli is right. on that list. You right. want to be considerate of the other people and the smells that are around you. So maybe that tuna fish is better eaten outside. <laughs> um, go to your car and eat the tuna fish sandwich if you like it so much. But being aware of other people, I think that's that's what we're trying to explain. Will you stand shoulder to shoulder with me in Washington and protest that tuna fish should be banned. I, I really try not to get too political. Oh my God. This. You I'm can't sorry. even ban tuna fish? <laughs> I don't eat it personally and Thank I can't you. even ban it. it I don't shouldn't be if allowed. That, if that is, I don't want to yuck somebody else's yum. So if oh, that's no. what somebody else wants no, to do. No, we need to yuck the yum. <laughs> Are you saying in, in office spaces it has to be Period. banned or just it should in be general? Banned in, tuna fish should be illegal. That is one food that should never be consumed. I, I'm, I, I'm with you there in heart, but if, if, so, if somebody else has to like it, you know, you will not everybody stand has with their me thing. in Washington to protest tuna fish. I don't, th I don't think that's, I don't think that's the hill I want to die on. I thought, I thought better of you. I'm, I'm disappointed. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you ever take a poll when you're maybe teaching a class about that and how many people actually raise their hand and say tuna fish is appropriate? You know what? I, I think that I'm going to start doing that do. for sure I want after numbers. this. And I, I will I will get you some data we that we data. can back this up with. <laughs> because if you tell me that 20% of, of polite society permits tuna fish during a business meeting, I'm jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll see how those numbers come in. Well, twenty twenty four is the year of the tuna fish poll. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, sushi, on the other hand, that's okay. Just saying, it doesn't stink. Well, if it's stinky tuna, then you shouldn't be eating it. Okay. Yeah, that's a bad sign. All right. So let's talk about um, job interviews. All right. So I will share with you that I am probably the worst job interview that ever existed, which is why I own my own businesses. I never have to interview for my own job because I own the company. However, every time I would interview, mostly in my prior business ownership career, I would just bomb. I mean, it, it wasn't even close. Uh, I'll give you one example. And, and apparently this is not allowed. You walk into a warm interview, warm interview being internal interview, right? So you've got human resources. You've been working with this guy in human resources for five years, whatever it is. Um, you've maybe had lunches with the guy, passed him in the hallway, could be a gal, you know, or whatever you want to identify as these days. And um, you walk in and the interview is going to begin and you make the mistake. Yes, I did this. Rusty, how the hell are you? That literally killed my entire job. I did not get a job in Charlotte that I wanted because of Rusty, how the hell are you? He literally berated me after the interview. Now, how was that, that because it was too casual or that you cursed? He called that a curse and it was too casual. And I didn't get a job so for that because I couldn't be trusted. 
So that is that first impression. And no matter how we say we shouldn't judge other people and you know, kumbaya, we do. We do judge people. We judge people by their actions. We judge people by their words. And we judge people by their appearance. This is just a fact. It's, you know, it's inevitable. And so you, you know, but what a great lesson. You probably didn't need the job in Charlotte anyway, but you learned, hey, this threshold is okay. higher for somebody else. So now I know. But, you know, I think you you, you did cut, you, you struck out on two levels there that, you know, that over casual tone and cursing. And for some right people, me. cursing is absolutely a, you know, deal breaker. Um, but I mean, but when you know Rusty, and Rusty's a dick, just saying. <laughs> And Rusty uses those terms in a casual way outside of my interview. The hypocrisy is glaring, which then leads me to be like, why you got to be so judgmental? Now, why are we so judgmental, Christy? You know, we, we try not to be, but it, this is in our DNA. We had to decide, you know, back when we were, you know, just starting out, is this person a... Um, friend or are they going to try to eat us? And so we had to make those judgments very quickly. And no matter how far we evolve, we still make those snap judgments. I tell students, it, this is your billboard. People will be driving by it. You don't get to explain the billboard. You don't get to follow up with the billboard. This is the billboard. And so what do you want to put on your billboard? That's a fantastic and analogy. And so um, that's when people say, well, you know, I'm not sure I've got pink hair. Is this going to be a detriment to me getting, you know, promoted? I'm like, well, OK, look and see what the people look like who are promoted. And, um, you know, tattoos and piercings, those are a big one these days. And I am by in no means a, uh, don't want people to get them. But sometimes in that job interview setting, you have to know to minimize that unless it is your interviewing to be a tattoo artist, then I, I don't think that that's a problem. But in other situations, learn to minimize it and just have that level of professionalism. Because you don't want people thinking, you know what, if they don't know this, what else don't they know? Mm. So that's another really great question right there is, 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 is the if the interviewer is thinking that then you have basically lost the job yes wow yes hmm. so all all over a boat anchor tattoo on someone's <laughs> left cheek it, right and yeah um you know that is hard hard to cover up and so i would say first of all let's think before we act is that really you know what we want but then secondly minimize, be able to minimize that, be able to have a professional look. Because once people get to know you and they realize how great you are and how talented you are, they are going to look past any of those things that might have stood out to them. But in the beginning, that can really be a barrier for people. So we have to have to start, you know, showing people how great we are. And then we can almost get away with anything. In your professional opinion, and this is your opinion here, and I'm going to hold you to this with no value. In your professional opinion, how did society or where did we skew to the point and why did we skew to the point where it is somehow considered acceptable by some people, mostly maybe young, but not necessarily really, to be confident enough to walk into a job interview in sweatpants that say juicy on the ass with <laughs> tattoos on their faces and blue hair. That really is a stunning amount of confidence, isn't it? You know, it I mean, um, I, I, I think that we become more informal as a society and people, you know, I hear people all the time, is that why you become, became an etiquette teachers because you were just so tired of seeing everyone in their bad manners. And that's not at all why I did it. I could see what having good manners can do for a person. And that's why I chose to do this. But the other thing is that as we're becoming more and more informal, it is so much easier to stand out. It mm. takes much less effort to stand out by knowing what to wear, knowing how to say hello to people sending that thank you note. It takes very little in today's society to stand out 
with good manners. So don't you find um, it strange though that people are doing these wild things or what used to be considered wild and now having a, you know, fish tattoo on your face is considered normal. But don't you feel though that they are doing that to stand out? Initially, but then it's like you when everyone does the same thing to stand out, then no one stands out. So that's why I think, you know, if you want to stand out, write that thank you note. If you want to stand mm -hmm. out, know how to shake somebody's hand, know how to show up in a virtual meeting. Those will help you stand out far more Ooh. than other things and get you further. Ooh, you just, you just tickled me right there. How do you show up on a virtual meeting? What is that supposed to be? You need to look like you're in the office or pretty close to that. So we are wearing clothes. And if it's only from the, you know, the top half, that's fine. Um, pick a nice background. Even if that's a white wall behind you, make sure that it's not laundry or dirty dishes. Anything distracting during the meeting. So I have been um, on hundreds and hundreds of virtual meetings. I have had people vape during meetings. I have had people smoke cigarettes during meetings. I once had somebody want to have lunch with me during COVID. And so they sent lunch to my house mm -hmm. and then we got on video and ate lunch with each that other on video. But that was a thing then. Horrible, horrible idea. I mean, I, I was trying to eat, you know, Kung Pao chicken at my desk and it was just a mess. And so we don't want to eat in front of other people. Um, nice sentiment, but it, it just didn't work out well. So you know, don't do things that you wouldn't do when you're in the office. So especially if you're hybrid, you have other people who are in the office, you need, you know, they don't get the chance to run on the treadmill while they're, you know, having a meeting. Um, always turn that camera on to remove the mystery of what's actually going on. And it helps you pay attention as well. Hmm. hmm. So... Wow. Always, you got me on the always turn the camera on. You know, I find that a lot of people turn the camera off once the meeting begins. And you're saying it would be better etiquette to keep it on, albeit that would mean that you have to sit there and, you know, drink your drink or eat your food. So, I mean, is it appropriate to turn the camera off to take a bite of something and then turn it back on or just I withhold? I think, you know, withholding is the best thing. Is there, you know, do you have a lunch hour? Could it wait for another time? But otherwise, it's a phone call. So, you know, I, if we're not going to use video to make ourselves stay interested and to show others that we're interested, then I think you just have a phone call. You know, forget it. Um, don't worry about the cameras. Would you agree or disagree with this asinine statement? As a society we have now become a bunch of raging, selfish a-holes. I totally disagree wow. with that, but you knew that's what I was going to wow, say. Wow, you disagree. I, I mean, you're so polite. Oh, no. You know, I, I, here's the deal. When you start looking at things to find the good, in things, which is a lot of people don't associate with etiquette is that we're here to, you know, point out the mistakes. No, we're here to point out the good in things. You will find good people, good acts and good behavior all over the place. And then you have a lot more grace when things fall a little bit short of that. But um, no, we are, we are, we're better than we think we are. I love that message. Okay. Now, Politics and religion, they are meant to be talked about, yes? <laughs> How was your Thanksgiving? Did it turn out well, well for mine, you? Well, mine, I had COVID. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I always tell people, you know, when we're getting ready for Thanksgiving, let's think about, we don't want to talk about money, politics, difficult relationships, our health, or our finances. It's the big five, the five to stay away from. What are you talking about? And <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> You you talk about what you're binging on Netflix or I don't watch TV and the weather's vacation. nice outside. Let's get back to Donald Trump. <laughs> well, hey, weather's even one of those that's a little bit questionable to talk These about days, now. Right? Yeah. But it's it's really 
trying to stay away from those controversial topics until you're really comfortable with somebody. And it's and especially at Thanksgiving time, when we have various generations in the room, we have somebody who voted this way and somebody who voted that way, we are not going to change each other's mind over any of what? these things. So no, no, no one comes to any place to have their mind what? changed. So I know it's an amazing it's thing. So I say, um, yeah. Leave, leave it off the table. Don't do it. Resist the, the urge and try to find something else to talk about that's way more interesting. So you gave you gave this listening audience, who has to be enjoying this, by the way. I'm enjoying this. You gave this listening audience five things not to talk about. Repeat those one more time, and then I'm going to go to the next part. Go ahead. Okay. Money, religion, politics, difficult relationships, and health issues. Okay. Hemorrhoids are out. <laughs> All right. So now can you- you're making my point. <laughs> <laughs> so now what are five topics that should be used that would be considered etiquette and good to use? I think we can always talk about shared experiences. So, you know, what's on the menu, what a nice day it is outside those kinds of things. We can talk about things that we're looking forward to. We can talk about things that we're interested in, whether that's Netflix or what we're binging. We can talk about good past memories. So you might talk about family traditions that you had that were, you know, positive family traditions that you have. And then I think that you, um, gosh, you're five. There's a, there's a jillion, but I think you can talk about, um, Anything but yourself, I guess, would oh be my, my fifth God. one. What are you suggesting? Try to show interest in other people. What are you suggesting? Not, not about yourself How all the time. How dare you take that away from me? So that is something I think we're all extremely guilty of, is, is we're so focused on ourselves. We are the most fascinating creatures to ourselves. Uh, years ago, I, I, you know, I heard this thing. And I, I'd love to give credit to where I heard it. I'm, I'm blanking out, unfortunately, but uh, to be the most fascinating person on earth, you just have to ask someone about themselves. And you as the one asking is the most fascinating conversation you'll ever have. How can we be fascinating? It just literally has to come down to me asking you about yourself. And therefore, yes. the conversation is so, great. There's a story that we, we were told when we were doing our etiquette training about um, somebody's husband that went to a party. And to a T, everyone says, you know, did everyone, did you meet Bob? He was the best guy. He was the most fascinating guy at the party. And somebody asked Bob, you know, what, what was your secret? And he said, I only ask people about themselves. I didn't tell them anything about me. So people who are interested are interesting. And that means you're interested in the other person. You're interested in current events. You're interested in sports. You're interested in what's trending. You're interested in some of those, um, you know, pop culture things. But by being interested in those things and interested in other people, you will be interesting to other people. Okay. So I'm going to ask one final question because we are out of time. It's a very important question. You ready for this, Christy? I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you find me interesting? <laughs> I find our entire conversation interesting. All right. <laughs> yeah. We, we, got, we get to talk about ourselves, but we're uncovering something about somebody else. And so I think that that's really interesting. I hope everybody who's listening found it interesting as well. But, you know, some humor, really listening to somebody else and asking questions and finding out more about them, I think is always fascinating and you're very interesting oh thank you so much i appreciate that i have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you this was a lot of fun i'm, I'm glad that uh we were able to make this happen i know we had some scheduling conflicts before uh mostly my fault um and uh and and, and listen uh, i want to make sure that my audience can find you okay you are the polite company you are the one that they need to go to for all things etiquette how in the world can they find you they can find me on the World Wide Web at thepolitecompany.com. That's www.thepolitecompany.com, www.thepolitecompany.com. All right, well, yes. Christy, thank you so much. Do you have any final thoughts, last word, bits of advice, wisdom, anything you want to throw at us? I think, you know, just be kind to one another. 
Um, that is the what? basis that our that is the basis of what we do. Make others feel good every time you get a chance to. I can only be kind to people I stand and protest with. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to find something else to protest. Down with Bruna. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Christy. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you.